four lessons learned first the swans let's get into it so a new episode in this uh, lessons learned or learned um, series I actually kind of like doing this because it, it makes you sort of go back and, and what are we doing what's that sort of pattern um, that we've had for the last couple of weeks or what are we doing worse or better of um, and at the moment with two losses these are all just sort of bad things I do have a, a one sort of half positive in there but um, look let's start it off should we start it off with something good ish or something bad and then kind of get good now nah, let, let's start it off with something sort of goodish and then progressively get worse. Um, Finn McRae needs to start. So Finn was subbed on um, and played about 26% of game time. Uh, he was subbed on for Ash Johnson. Uh, he played, so 26% of game time, oh, that was my pen, uh, eight disposals, five contested possessions, two tackles, and two clearances. Now, that's... Um, that's pretty good for for twenty six percent game time, and let's just say so. Let's just say twenty five percent, right? A quarter of the game. So if you times that by four, eight, sixteen, twenty four, thirty two, pretty probably doesn't get thirty two disposals in a game. Um, but contested possessions, you know, for a full game, he's probably going to get you know around that twelve sort of fourteen range. Tackles, I reckon he gets about six six seven tackles in, in a full game. Um, probably eight. Remember that Essendon game where he came on for maybe a quarter and a half. He had about eight tackles in I think about thirty five percent of game time. And clearances, he probably com comes up to the you know six seven eight sort of clearances. So I think starting Finn is a huge must. When and I think I talked about this in in the review. Um, when we saw that he was, um, you know, Collingwood said Finn McPlay. Finn McRae is playing. Awesome. It's his 22nd birthday. Awesome. A year contract extension. Awesome. Oh my God. This this kid that we've been wanting for so long is going to play. He's got to start. Tom Mitchell out. Oh my God. It's crazy. And then they start him as the sub. Last week against the, the Giants, we were... Um, smashed around the clearances for or around you know the ground for being too slow too old too slow um and we did we looked slow so that was all warranted we bring in a kid who is hungry like absolutely starving for football and we say yeah yeah look um you're gonna be sitting on the bench for for three quarters until we until we need you finn mcrae is one of those players look fair enough if that was you know, like a Jack Ginnivan on there. You know, we use Jack Ginnivan to sort of boost everyone up and and a live wire, kick two goals or whatever it may be. Finn McRae isn't that type of player. Finn McRae is straight into the trenches um, and let him do his best work, especially with Tom Mitchell out. I think we did Finn wrong there in selection, um, putting him as a... Um, as a, as a sub, I think he needed to play the, the full game. And, and who sort of comes out for Finn? I don't, I don't know, man. Like, Tom Mitchell came out, put Markov as the sub, or put Will Hoskinelli as a sub. So you got, like, a little bit of spare legs uh, to run in the last quarter if you need it, right? Do that. Finn needed to, to start that game, move Nick Dacos to the half-back line. Like, something, something needed to be done, but Finn... Needed to start that game. So now what happens if Tom Mitchell is ready to go versus St. Kilda, which by all accounts he, he is ready to go? Does Finn come out of the team? Does he stay in the team? Um, I don't really know because based on that quarter of football, um, he did really well. So how can you justify taking him out of the team? So I think uh, even if Tom Mitchell is ready to go, and and by all means bring Tom Mitchell in somehow, um, Finn McRae needs to start. He needs to start against St. Kilda. The second lesson, stats lie. We we love to look at stats at the end of the game or during the game and be like, yeah, look, we won clearances. We dominated in the center against um, Sydney. Uh, inside 50s, we had about you know close to 50 or whatever it was. Um, and if you look at that on paper, you go, okay, that looks pretty good. But then if you watch the game, you're going, okay, we're getting it out the center and we're just bombing it in long and it's coming back. It's a ball up in the center, bombing it in long, coming back. Inside 50s, exactly the same thing, bombing it in long, getting intercepted, coming back. That's been two weeks in a row. I think last week against the Giants, we had about 60 inside 50s. We won the inside 50 count, won the clearance count, but weren't doing anything with it. You know, even um, McRae, a fly, fly came out and said, um, I think it was last week, or was it against Sydney? In one of the press conferences in the last two weeks, you know, even he said, like, 
yeah, okay, we're winning these, but we're not doing anything with the ball. We're not getting it where we need to, where it needs to go. So, you know, when you when you're sort of doing that, it, it's sort of a, you know. It looks like it's a band-aid sort of, oh, okay, but we are winning clearances, so we are getting a lot of the ball, or we are getting inside 50, so we're giving ourselves the opportunities. But the opportunities that we're giving ourselves are absolutely shit. They're absolutely shocking, you know? Um, and that's why Ash Johnson had a bad game. That's why my check. you look at the stats, my check. I know I just said stats lie, but if you look at the stats, my check and um, Ash Johnson pretty much had the same sort of stat-wise game, right? Um, and then if you watched it on TV, they're pretty much doing the exact same thing anyway. So, um you know, just those big stats where we are winning some sort of stuff, they do, they do lie. It's like, oh, disposals, winning. But, but on paper, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, it looks good on paper, but then you look at it and you're like, okay, we, we have to disregard this. Like, we have to disregard that we're winning clearances. We have to disregard that we're getting all this ball inside 50 because we're just doing absolutely nothing with it. And we are just disconnected, just playing like absolute crap at the moment. The third lesson learned is pressured pies. So last year, well, actually the last probably two seasons, we've been known as pressure pies, right? Uh, we've been doing that pies pressure, that intense, this guy's getting the ball off the a halfback and there's six Collingwood players. We're going through the um, we're going through the middle and there's heaps of Collingwood players that are just sort of swarming and and you know we did it we did it well in the grand final where we had to lock the ball in for seven minutes and the GWS game for the last twelve minutes we have to we have to lock the ball in and we're pressuring we're tackling we're pressuring pressuring pressuring. Now it's been flipped. We are getting pressured. Like look at this in last week. Sorry, a game against the Swans. The Swans laid 72 tackles. They had 56 one percenters. So that's, um, uh, you know, I th was, is a one percenter a, a shepherd? Uh, I think that it might be a shepherd or a, um, a spoil or, or, you know, something like that. that that's what the one percenters are. Um, 72 intercepts. The Swans had 72 intercepts and they forced, uh, they forced us to have 72 turnovers. Now, I don't know what the league average is for, for turnovers, um, but... Where our turnovers were coming from were in dangerous positions. In the back line, Darcy Moore trying to go over the top, gets intercepted. Uh, Jeremy Howe did it. Uh, Scott Pendlebury did it. When Pendles is doing it and when Nick Dacos is doing it, that's when you know that there's a problem. And when you're pressured so hard like that, sloppy football, and that's what we're seeing. And that's where 72 tackles, intercepts, forced turnovers, sloppy football, and that's where that disconnect is happening from. And... You know, for the last two seasons, we are, you know, we're not a perfect football team. And for the last two seasons, we've been able to sort of not get away with it, but not, you know, have 72 bloody turnovers in a game. And, and it hasn't been, or if we're having high turnovers, it's not sloppy football. It, it just sort of these things that sort of happen. But if you watch that Sydney game back and, and you know, if you, if you were there and you were watching it anyway, um, the turnovers were in just such dangerous spots it was like all for for in the sydney's sort of forward half and those are what cost you goals and that's that's how they're sort of getting out the back and we saw it against um the giants as well those turnovers were how they were sort of running back and finding callum brown and, and jesse hogan in free space how many goals did logan mcdonald kick from five meters within the goal square because it was prop pretty much from a from a turnover or from an intercept and we were just absolutely sloppy. The the connection that we had isn't there anymore. And Craig McRae says that he knows what, what the problem is or, you know, it's a it's an easy fix and I I'd love to obviously, you know, in fly we trust, right? Um but I'd love to see this get sort of turned over because when Pendles is getting caught with the ball when Brayden Man is in, is in no man's land, when Nick Dacos is sort of trying to do everything like because no one else is doing anything, there are more underlying problems than just zero and two. And um, it's just, we went from a premiership to a bad football side in the last two, last two um, games. But I know that we've got the personnel there. We haven't got a major in injury issues, um, except for Dan McStay. But I think it's just skills, right? So I think that that really does turn, and I, and I hope to see it. I hope we become pressure pies as opposed to pressured pies against St. Kilda on um, Thursday night. Now, the last lesson that I learned is a bit, is a bit of a different one. It's 
man, we have fair weather fans sometimes, right? So in a game where we were unfurling the flag, in a game where Collingwood um, told us we were the, the 19th, the 19th man, and that's all we've been. And, and, you know, the club for the last two years has brought us in to their echelon and, and you know, brought us into their inner sanctum behind the scenes. We've got the, that doco that was incredible. And I see supporters leaving in droves, absolute droves, just three-quarter time. And I get it, right? Look, I'm not saying... You have to stay until the final siren. Personally, I stay until the final siren, even if we're getting done by 60 points, right? But that's just me. Um, but I get it if you've got a three-hour drive home. Look, fair enough. That, that's that's fair enough, right? But these guys got us to the promised land. They gave us a premiership. They say they need us. They need the Magpie Army. They feed off us. How do you think they feel when we're walking at it at three-quarter time when we're walking out halfway through the fourth quarter. Against Sydney in the prelim 2022, we stayed until the end. Obviously, it was a one-point loss. And we clapped the, the team off. We were louder than the Sydney supporters cheering their team on. We clapped our team off. They need us now more than ever. Like, at the end of the game, they're you know, the 18th man is looking for the 19th man, and they're not there. They're, they're, all, they're all gone. And I know it was a shit game, and I know we played friggin' shocking, but, you know, we we make we made fun. I made fun of, of Carlton supporters saying they were leaving in droves when we when we played them um, early last year, you know. And now we're doing it. We, we, used, we laugh at these teams that are doing it, and now we're the laughing stock, and we're the ones getting receipts pulled on us, like me, because we're doing it, right? No one else in this country, AFL football-wise, is calling their team the army, the 19th man and stuff. We're doing it, and then we're leaving. We're, we're not giving this club the respect that they deserve. They need us now more than when they're winning. They need us now when we're 0-2, and two, when we're you know on the brink of a shit season, more than when we're winning. Like... You know, I'm not saying fucking get there and stay till the end and clap the boys off and tell them, good job, and um, you did awesome today, even though we lost by 50 points. I'm not saying that. Like, be critical of, of the team, because they're playing shit. Be critical of it. But give them more respect. And, and another thing that I want to sort of mention, Ash Johnson, right? And I, I've said this on, on Instagram. You, you've probably seen it. Um he deleted his social media because he was just the amount of abuse that he was getting from Collingwood fans, um, just piling on. Yes, he had a shit game, right? By his own admission, he had a shit game. But every people, like every sort of player, had a shit game. Nick Dacos, Darcy Cameron, probably Brayden Maynard are the only sort of ones that they can hold their head up high. Ash Johnson must be the new whipping boy, right? But Brody Majek, like I said earlier, had a shit game as well. I uh, didn't kick a goal. Jamie Elliott only kicked a couple of goals at the at the last quarter, you know. Um, but Ash Johnson, the abuse that he cops isn't fair. Um, and look, I'm not again. I'm not saying this is not me standing on a soapbox or anything like that. I'm saying, yeah, man, like be critical of the players. Like I, even I was critical. I said Ash Johnson had a shit game because he did. He had a bad game. But I'm not going to get personal and, and personally attack him for a game of football like you know how much abuse do you have to cop to get off social media like I know for a fact I know for a fact that Ash doesn't want to jump back on social media I know for a fact that his confidence is so shot that he he doesn't think that he's going to to play well for for a long time now right and he he knows this the club knows this, and the and the players know that when they're playing bad. But you know they've got family on on these on these apps. Do you really think that they the family need to see you just like a, a, abusing them? Like not a, not at all. Like it's a game of football. As Johnson, you you played bad, but look, you know, get on the horse and, and sort of go again. Find your form in the VFL. Like that's fine. You know you played shit. Fuck. You know I wish you had done this. Wish you had done that. But. You know, it's just, look, I, and, 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 you know, mental health is a huge thing and something that I'm a big sort of supporter and, and believer in. And look, believe me, I'll, I've probably said some insane shit against the player as well. 
um, you know, for playing shit. But I I'm trying to be a better person, and that's all we can ask for. We only can grow. We only can sort of help each other uh, to be a better person than we were yesterday, you know. Um, and, you know, I even see it on, on my sort of Twitter and stuff. Like, I'll say something specifically about the football, and then I get personally attacked for my height or weight or whatever it may be. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? It's, it's a game of football, and you want to personally attack. You don't even fucking know me. And that's me. That's me. I'm just... A, a content creator, no affiliation with the club. I'm literally just talking into my iPhone and putting it on the internet. Yeah, sometimes I talk a little bit of shit, like, you know, a little bit of shit, right? But that doesn't warrant personal attacks, right? So that's just me, and I've had to stop social media for a little bit as well because I've, I've felt shit and depressed and whatever it may be. This guy's a professional footballer, and he's getting piled on from all over the country. So all, all, I guess all I'm trying to say is, Respect the boys, stick with them, because, you know, we used to laugh about supporters that did this with their teams, and then, oh, but weren't you burning your membership six weeks ago, and now you're back on the train, and don't sack your coach, and blah, blah, blah. That was us. Ah, sorry, that was them. Don't let that be us. But anyway, those are just my four lessons. I know that was a bit of a, a tangent, but I had to get that off my off my noggin. Um, but... Yeah, that's just a bit of um, bit of the four lessons learned from the Sydney game. Let me know your thoughts down below. What were the lessons that you learned from the Sydney game? But as always, like, comment, subscribe. Take family, take friends, take pets. Until next time, double check us. I'll see you later.